Right, there we go. Right, let's get all our, <coughs> excuse me, let's get all our uh, eggs in a row, as I said, or ducks in a row, eggs in a row, ducks in a row, you idiot. Uh, let me see, let me check. What is going on here now? Do we not have any string? I do, there we go. That took a while, Jesus. What ah, happened there? There we go, right, yeah. Took a while for YouTube to uh, to catch up there for some reason. Don't know why. Uh, we're going to share this to the My Game Steam Discord. So people know that I am live on the community. So if you don't know my friends, um, yeah, My Game Steam does have a Discord channel. I'm going to go check it out. And uh, you'll get a lot of... Uh, Information and that type of thing on the uh, various upcoming projects from my game steam There we go. We have audio on for the uh, yay. We're doing very well today. So my friends welcome back to the channel Hope everybody is safe and well My friends we are going to be taking a look at the uh, the latest beta build of the uh, defense katana here uh, As per the title of the uh, the live stream we are well and truly on the road to version 1.3 of the uh, Fent Katana. Um, myself and my game team have been working on this for the last several weeks. Uh, adding new things, new features, that type of thing. We're going to take a look at the new stuff that has been added into the mod. Um, do remember, my friends, that it is still in the beta process. So, you know, things will change, you know. Uh, the change log and that type of thing has has to be written yet you know, properly, you know, in terms of you know what's different from version 1.2 to 1.3. Um, I'll take a look at this. I'm going to show you this. Uh, uh, oh crap! Let me just. Uh, oh crap! A second. Where? Oh, God damn it! I tell me I have to run to the bloody shop. Holy crap! I wish there was a way that you could just, you know, uh, some kind of button or something, or some way just to kind of just appear at the shop or something. You know, instead of you know moving over. Anyways, enough of that nonsense. So this is your um, this is your header pickup. This is your uh, P three zero zero three, right? So this was originally a Kemper header. Right, so we've obviously rebranded it to Vent. Let's have interactive control. Right, you can see all the internals there, look. All this stuff works inside, okay? Did a lot of work to this. So what's different than this one? Well, um, you may notice here, my friend, that there is a, a logo in there. It says Vent. So I was looking at the real world, uh, the real world uh, Kemper version of this header. And the real world ver version, the Kemper header, actually has a, a Kemper logo in this area, right? So basically what I did was I added a Fent logo to that area, and that's what you're seeing there. So that is a minor little uh, adjustment, I guess you could say, to the uh, the header here. Uh, another thing that I've done as well, I've added a horsepower rating to a lot of the, well, all of these pieces of equipment, right? So you can see here, my friends, um, this piece of equipment here re requires 80 horsepower to uh, to operate. So the reason for that is, this thing is PTO powered. Right? So um, you have your PTO connector here, and when you hook it up to the, uh, the katana, it hooks up via a PTO connection. So I kind of thought to myself, you know what? If, thing, if this is going to be hooking up to a uh, PTO connection, then it should require a you know a certain amount of horsepower. So if you look here, my friends, you can see there clearly that there is a uh, PTO connection from the, uh, the header to the harvester. Right. So in that instance, my friends, um, I have decided to add a horsepower rating of 80 horsepower to this thing. I think that is very, very reasonable. Um, I don't know what it would be in the real world. I, I just took a guess, basically. 
Brian, how are you, sir? How are things? Thank you for tuning in, sir. I appreciate that. Hope you're doing well, Brian. So yeah, I, I just made a guesstimate as to um, you know what the possible horsepower rating might be. Based on, you know, the width and, and what it's doing and that type of thing, you know. Uh, do we not have our uh, visibility here? Okay. So, we are missing something else here, obviously. Unfold pipe. Uh, there we go. Right, now it should work. What's up? Is it a header? Not doing too bad, no sir. Not doing too bad. We are taking a look at the uh, the latest beta build here of the, uh, the Fink Katana. We are on the road to, to version 1.3. So as you can see here, my friends, all of the various pieces here, all moved. All animated, all the pulleys and wheels and that type of thing. That has all been newly added, of course, by my game team, the Fentatana pack. Uh, you will not find that in the base game piece of equipment. You won't find this. Uh, you won't find this uh, PTO attached or connection either on the uh, on the base game piece of equipment. So we've obviously added that stuff ourselves, and we did a lot more to it as well, obviously. So the next piece of equipment here, we have, um, I added a horsepower rating to this. Okay, so this is now has a 100 horsepower rating. That has a PTO connection as well. So this has choppers. So I would imagine it needs a little bit more horsepower. This is for poplars, obviously. And you can appreciate my bad driving as well while you're at it. Once again, my friends, you can see there, there's a PTO connection to the, uh, the header here. You have the two blades there. This is a two meter working width. This is obviously for poplars. Okay. What's that? What else do we have, my friends? So yeah, we've added a horsepower rating to the, uh, the Spartan 700. Uh, we've added horsepower to the 200 FB and the P3003. Okay, next up we have the Spartan 700. My game steam has finished almost all of the work now on the side cutter knives. Okay, we're going to show you that. Um, we've also added the ability for, um, so basically uh, when you add the side cutter knives here, which costs 8,000. Uh, my game steam uh, did the, the hoses. <clears throat> you can see the hoses now are, are connected. So they're on both sides, obviously. So this is what it looks like. These are side cutter knives. These are pretty much the same thing as the forage harvester header for this class pickup. No, not this one. Where is it? This thing, right? So, so, so I use this as the basis, right? This has a design configuration for the knives. Look, see how they've done that there? See that, right? So what we did was we we, we, we did our own thing. We we took that uh, i3d element and we modified it to kind of to work with the uh, the katana or the Spartan, I should say. So you know we had to make the hoses from scratch. Uh, we re removed some of the elements off the uh, the cutter knives and changed the color to Spartan red. That type that type of thing. But the uh, the color will actually change now. Uh, the whole thing. Look, so it's all kind of a matchy matchy now all right so that kind of gives you the idea there so yeah a thousand bucks so this is all fully done now now it has no this is for visual purposes only um, there's no in-game functionality with these side cutter knives and even the uh, the class disco head has no functionality either. Just be aware of that. It's purely a visual thing. Right. So this is kind of what it looks like here. You have your side cutter knives. Okay. Now there's one little piece that my game system has to add inside here, right? So when you open this, right. 
So if you look up here, look. Uh, now you can't see it because of the angle, but basically, the uh, these pieces here at the top. God damn it! Can I see it now? So you have your your connection hoses, right? And then the uh, the hoses run through. Okay, they go down and then they go inside, right? So basically, there's another hose to uh, come down here and attach to these two points here. See these two points? So they, you know, they the hydraulic hoses attach here. They run inside, and then they attach to these points in here, basically. So that's kind of how that works there. And it'll be the same on the opposite side as well. So you have your IC point here. So you have your two hydraulic hoses here, and they will basically attach to two points in here, right? So that'll be, you know, how they're, you know, powered and operated and that type of thing, okay? So that kind of explains that. At least that's our kind of representation of it. The no, cutter knives do actually work. to see them they're chopping away as I said they have no in-game functionality they're purely visual but um i you know these are these are a real world thing a real world shop option that you can get with the Capella Spartan you know so um I, I kind of wanted to add them in you know because they are actually a real world thing so in the real world these would be used for maize crops right? so for example we have it set up here um just imagine this was, I don't know, uh, wheat, barley, or whatever, you know, some kind of a maize crop. So, these cutter knives, in, in the real world at least, would have a function. Let's put this on a worker. Just watch him a little bit, see what he does, you know. So there's your side cutter knives there. And you chop away. So that is kind of the, uh, the new latest addition to the um, Capella Spark 700. Which, uh, as I've said before, my friends, is, is a real-world piece of equipment. This is not fantasy or made-up. This is based on a real-world piece of hardware. Uh, this is a 6.9 meter <coughs> uh, header. Obviously, you have interactive control. All this stuff works inside. Shown this off before, but we'll look at it again. Might as well. So, you know, uh, we looked at real world pictures and videos of the uh, Capella Spartan header, you know, and, uh, you know, we tried to make it as accurate as possible to the real world piece of equipment. We've got this PTO cover here, so there's a PTO underneath here, look, see that? So there's a cover here that goes on and a safety cover. So that's what that is there. So you have the opposite side as well. That looks like in there, look. You have your side cutter knives and it's bolted on here as you can see at the front. Alright. Now I think it looks pretty good. I I think it it, it, it looks I, I would say it looks part of it if that makes sense. I'm happy with the way it looks and everything. I think it looks quite cool. And that, yeah. So that's kind of the, a new uh, shop option or a new feature of the uh, Capella Spark 700. We've been doing more work on the internal cabin area. Um, we have added more interactive control functionality into the uh, interior of our harvester here. 
So, uh, if you've seen my previous videos, you know, I basically only kind of uh, talk about, the, I guess, the new stuff. So, uh, what we've done here is, um, there's a new startup screen. Uh, screen, I should say. So, when you turn on the engine, you get this startup screen, the Fent logo. Alright. Uh, just give me one second there, guys. Excuse me. So basically, um, you have the new startup screen, and then you you will have three more um, swappable screens. Now it is not functioning in this current build here, um, because basically um, there was a little bit of an issue with the uh, the buttons. See, see the buttons here. Look, see all these buttons. Basically, the the, the buttons are kind of uh, they weren't positioned properly. So I asked my game team to do it again. But basically you will have three swappable screens and you'll be able to go left and right you know that type of thing so you'll, you'll be able to click on the you know the, the left button here and then the right button and you'll be able to you know move through the uh, the various screens and each screen then will have its own you know pieces of information and, and that type of thing you know uh, associated with each screen so but that is uh, as I said that'll be in the kind of the, the next bit next build I guess so once again, you have all the the interactive control stuff here. The doors. We're going to be checking all these icons as well. I decided just to, just to make sure that we're going to look over them again. You can move in and out the the uh, the side mirrors here. They're all icy sounds associated with this. No all. How are you, sir? How are things? Thank you for tuning in, my friend. Appreciate that. Hope you're doing well, sir. Um. You can uh, move in and out the uh, the mirrors here as well. So there's sounds associated with everything. Okay. So in and out, and swing it in and out as well. All right. You can put up and down your steering column. Okay. You have your hazard lights, so left and right hazards. You turn off your engine, turn on your engine, start up screen with the vent. Here's your, all your controls here. Oh, so all these buttons will, will, will uh, so like for example, there's two icons here at the moment, right? But you can have, to have up to four depending on the header type, you know what I mean? So in this particular header here, which is a Spartan 700, you know, um, there's only two buttons showing up. But but the more advanced headers, you know, like the the Kemper uh, corn headers and that type of thing, they'll have more extra buttons. You have an emergency stop button that shuts everything down. You have to turn on the engine again. You've got various um, header controls that turns on and off the header. Up here you have your internal light, you have your radio. So if you have the in-game radio, you know, selected. No, I have I have it disabled for copyright reasons, but you can turn on and off your in-game radio. Up here you have your wiper controls. Uh, you can adjust all four wipers. Uh, the front one. You have the left one. You have the right one. And then you have the one at the back. Probably missed that. Let me try that again. There you go. So that's that one. Um, you have your various beacon lights. Uh, you can turn on your hazards. You can turn on your beacon lights. You can turn on your various work lights. Um, so you've you've got all of the, kind of the, the the stuff in here. You know, it pretty much you can pretty much operate everything. Uh, you know, via interactive control with this thing. So you can turn on your beacon light, your hazards, that type of thing. So you can kind of see all the buttons here. So you have full control, access control up here of all your various functions. There are controls on the outside as well. There are buttons on the outside. Emergency stop button here, look. Alright, so she'll stop it. What is, what is this? So this is the lower implement. Alright. Alright, so that is lower. 
and that is lift. See that? And then other, these other buttons will operate as well depending on what header you have attached, right? So you've seen all this stuff before. You have all the interactive control here. This is what the internals look like. So we, we uh, my game team, you know, did all this work here. Obviously you have this stuff here. Turns on the internal lights as well. You have the, uh, the storage boxes here. You have the rear door. You have the opposite side. You have this one here. I added a new sign here. 40 MPH sign here. See this? So that's going to be in the new build. Um, I was looking at real world videos of the, you know, the real world uh, Fen Katanas and uh, some of them at least had, had a, a speed sign on the side here. So I just decided to add it there. I don't know if I'm going to keep this stuff, but it's there at the moment. Right, so you have your interns here. You have your, uh, your, uh, your def, uh, is this the def or the silage additive? I'm not sure. No, I say uh, it's the def. Alright, so there's a lot of stuff going on with this thing. A lot of interactive control options with this mod. So yeah, version 1.2 is out at the moment. Uh, we are beta testing and working on version 1.3. And that's what we're doing here today. So yeah, and we've got the, the grease add-on. You've seen me uh, show this stuff off before. Sir Tony of Myth. How the hell are you, sir? How are things? I hope you're doing well, sir. So we lock everything up. There's all sorts of sounds associated with everything. We have the opposite side here as well. I'll just close everything up. You know, we need to be conscious of road safety and not uh, kill anybody. All right. So yeah, when there's an uh, there's an enter and exit animation. So when you enter the vehicle, the steering column automatically goes down. All right. So once again, you have your, your interactive control stuff here. So as I said again, my friends, we have the new startup screen for the Fent logo. Uh, there will be three swappable screens here eventually. Uh, we just have to fix the icons, the interactive control icons were a little bit screwed up, so we have to fix kind of, you know, fix them again before it, before it'll be working. Uh, we're gonna put this in as well. So yeah, the uh, so it's kind of the, the the big part for me was getting these things done. Uh, these cutter knives. I'm very happy now that they are actually fully functional. So you know there is uh, you know there's a lot of I guess under the stuff hood stuff I guess if that's the word. So for example, in 1.3 we've um, made some adjustments to this. Made some adjustments to the um, the position of the reflectors. I added a beacon light at the back here. Um, there's some interactive control options that I added to this as well. So you walk up to this here, you can actually put up and down the, uh, the move support here. Right, so that kind of goes by interactive control here. So yeah, I moved the position of some of the, uh, the reflectors, added the beacon light at the back. A lot of small changes, a lot of just minor tweaks and that type of thing. Oh, just be aware, um, there are collisions on these wings, on these doors, look. So that's intentional. Oh. Okay, so you have your beacon light at the back here, look. You have your lights and that type of thing, your license plate and all that stuff. That's newly added. If I spawn a header, this should work. So, um, if I spawn, spawn this header, now I haven't tested it with the knives. Ooh, I wonder will the knives uh, conflict with the, um, with the header? I have not tested this. Oh, let me reset everything here. Let's get rid of everything. 
let's clear the decks as they say. Uh, we are going to move this out of the way as well. Super strength here. Yeah, get out of the way. Go! Move! There you go. Right. Let's put that back on. Right, let's spawn this again, shall we? Okay, we get the header trailer. Okay. You can put uh, brands on this as well. You can put Lizard. You can put Capello. Fence. Kemper. So there's all sorts of, you know, brands you can put on this thing. Now, if I get the header, the Spartan, this should spawn in and uh, snap onto the uh, the header trailer. It did, look. Yay! Woohoo! And there's no issues or conflicts. That's perfect. Awesome. There we go. Look at that. Look. So, so the, um, you know, once the, you know, the, the header is in within a certain range of the uh, the header trailer, it would automatically, you know, uh, snap onto it, I guess is the word. You know, it's like a tension belt things. So that's got to be very handy for people, especially when transporting. So this thing will not move. Um, you know, it'll be very difficult to get this uh, header off the trailer. You know, you, it won't be easy to, you know, to, to get it to, you know, to fall off or anything. Just to be aware of that. Uh, be more realistic if the collisions bent them and uh, ripped them off. Well, that's that's kind of true, Brian. But giants don't necessarily allow that type of thing. You know, they don't want to see any damaged equipment or you know doors ripping off their you know their pieces of equipment or anything. You know, so I I don't know. I mean, I I personally wouldn't mind seeing stuff like that, but I I don't think giants are their their uh, partners would like to see, uh, you know, broken equipment or doors hanging off. But uh, that might be something for Tony, you know. He, he seems to be into breaking mods and, and, and catapulting them and stuff. So maybe, you know, maybe that might be something he will consider. So yeah, there you go. Look, that's the... Uh, she fits perfectly. I, 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 I hadn't tested this thing, actually. So I wasn't sure if this was going to work. But yeah, she works absolutely fine. So that's that one. Uh, do we have anything else? Oh. Um, right, so we have the uh, the Kemper 400F. So there's new options with this as well, right? So we've got some new bumper design options that we've added to this thing, right? So we have uh, bumper design one, right? We have design two, and then we have design three. Right, so these these are new shop options that have been added for this thing as well. Right, so uh, options will will disappear and appear as you select each kind of version. Just to be aware of that. So in this one, you get uh, you can have the pole, you can have the wing type. Uh, I've added some new colors. I've added some metallic colors. Look at that one. Look, and I've added some other metallic colors here. See that? Look. So you've got some metal colors here. Then you have the decals here. Look, it's a, oh, no, that's the wrong one. So you have the the, uh, the metal decal here. You have that design, that one, that one. Uh, if I change up the design here, look, that will swap that as well. See that, look. So there's all sorts of uh, different design options available on that. Uh, this is, well, without doubt, this is the most advanced version of the Kemper 400F of any mod out there. No one has done this level of work onto this thing. It's probably something that's been overlooked, you know what I mean? I, I think most people have not given this piece of equipment any thought whatsoever. But, um, you know, we, we've done a, a, a lot with this thing. You know, it's much, much more advanced and much more accurate to the real world piece of equipment with all the decals and everything on this thing whereas the Giants version doesn't have anything so it is much much more uh, real world accurate uh, I've added some colours to the pole as well stay off the pole Tony uh, so yeah you've got a, I added a metallic colour to it as well so yeah you can do that as well you can change it to pink all right so yeah a lot of new options added to this one as well and um 
you know, we are rapidly approaching uh, 1.3. It, it's coming together very, very nicely indeed now, you know. So, you know, um, I, I'm not entirely sure when it will be ready, but let's say we're, we're a lot closer than we were, let's say, Thursday or Friday. So, yeah, it, we've made a lot of progress in the last couple of days, so I'm quite happy with that. So, yeah, and that's kind of where we are at the moment with the uh, version 1.3 of the uh, Defend Katana. Without a doubt, the most technically advanced and, and accurate uh, mod out there. In my opinion, at least. You know? Goofing European AG safety flags. Uh, yeah, I mean, you probably wouldn't... You know, we don't have it like a US specification or anything, but... Uh, we do like our design options, you know? So you obviously have the uh, Katana, the 850, and we have the 1050. So we have the manual pipe control, short, medium, and long pipes. Oh, I didn't show you the camera version. Oh, crap. I didn't show you the um, the camera. So there's another thing that we've added to this as well. Hold on a second. I think I have the wrong version. Let me get rid of that. Let me show you what else we've added to this thing. I nearly forgot. Um, <clears throat> the camera view system. Now, the camera view system is now a shop option. Okay. And we've added a front and rear camera. So there are physical cameras now that are actually on this thing. So at the rear pipe here, there's a camera. Okay. At the front here as well, you can see the kind of object change here. Look, there's a camera at the front, right? Um, if I get a header once again... So I'll try and zoom in here. So there is a camera on the pipe. A little bit difficult to see. Okay, there's a camera on the pipe. And there's a camera on the front here. Can you see it there? Attaches first. Jump! God damn it. My legs must be very short in game or something. Yeah, so there's a camera on the front here. So when you go in cab, right, and you hit the camera view system, so you press the Z button. Okay. And there's your pipe camera. Right, now I can show you that. So watch what happens to the camera. Look. So this is manual pipe control. Right. So you can see it here, you can move it up and down. Do that. Okay. Just move around a little bit. See that. So you can move it up and down, right? So that's the, the camera pipe control, right? So that's the uh, the manual version, right? And then we have the front camera. So you have to. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, which button is it? It's K. So there's the front camera there, right? Okay, so this, uh, now let me put the header down. So that's raised up. Okay, that's what it looks like with the, and that's raised down. So you can actually see the, uh, the header on the front here. See that? So you've got front and rear cameras now on the, uh, on the katana here. Now we may do a little bit of tweaking with the, uh, kind of the, the view, you know, how, how the camera is positioned, but, you know, there's only so much you can do, really. So, you can see that's the front camera, okay, and we'll swap again, that's the rear camera, alright, and we can move this a little bit over, center it a little bit, okay, and we switch the front one again. Uh, we'll turn on the header. There you go. So we can swap now between the two of them. OK. 
Okay. You can kind of see it going there. So that's the, the pipe camera, and that's the front camera. So yeah, that's some new stuff that we've added as well. Uh, expanded on the, uh, the the camera view system, and we've uh, installed you know physical cameras onto the uh, onto the actual vehicle. And it's a shop option now as well. So if you don't want this, you know what I mean. It doesn't have to be there. That type of thing. And once again, you, you can move the, uh, the the piker up and down or whatever. swap to the other one again you can see the camera moving around there look so yeah that camera view system is, is pretty good I think you know uh, that's a PC only mod of course So you've got the 850 version, which is uh, 847 horsepower. Uh, you can put the uh, automatic pipe, you know, kind of a standard pipe. And then we have the 1050 version. All right. So there's object changes associated with this. You get these uh, the decals change, look. When you select 850 or 1050, the kind of colors invert. You get these metallic uh, framed mirrors. You get some uh, flashers as well on the 1050 and there's a few more little changes as well so the 1050 is at, at 1047 horsepower uh, great feature about thinking the front needs uh, less header and more field uh, yeah you could you, I could put it yeah I mean there's there's no limit as far as I'm aware about uh, the number of cameras you can install um, I I'm I personally prefer physical cameras. Right? So if I was to put a, a camera would say up here, right? Uh, I would want a physical, you know, a camera in this kind of area where I have one down here. So look there's a camera here and there's a camera on the rear pipe as well. No, I don't know if I can actually show it to you, but it is actually there. There it is. Look, see the camera look? So there's a camera on the pipe there. Alright. But yeah, there's there's nothing stopping you to um to add more camera views if you wanted to. Um, you could add a camera view from here, right? You could add a, another camera view from here. You could put one, you know, like down here or something like that. You know what I mean? You could add four or five different camera views if you wanted to, you know. Uh, it, it's just basically adding adding them in the the i3d file and then just doing the you know, the, the XML entries and that type of thing. Uh, once you get used to it, it's it's not too bad. You know, it, it do, it, there is a learning curve in terms of installing those cameras. You know, in terms of the i3D work and that type of thing. Um, I've got a couple of 4D modding mods here as well. Now, I haven't looked at these yet. Uh, I, I did send them to Tony, but I haven't looked at them myself. We're going to use the My Game Steam version of the MXM190. Uh, and we're going to use the turbo version because that's 250 horses. This particular mod here has simple IC uh, built into it at the moment. So I think once my game scene kind of gets a chance, we're going to port this to interactive control, because with interactive control you get a lot more things that you can do with the you know the internals. So with simple IC, for example, you can't turn on the engine. Uh, we can do that with interactive control. You ha you can do a lot more internal animations and and attach the icons to internal cabin functions with interactive control versus simple IC. So I see a lot of modders, they're, they're moving over to interactive control more and more because it is more flexible, you know. And in, in terms of the, the the process of, you know, the I3D work and the XML, it's not that different. You know what I mean? There isn't that much, you know, additional work involved in that type of thing. So we've got the 4D modding. So these are his latest kind of mods. 
So it's got this Kelly Brohan thing. This is a big bulk ass trailer. So he's made the special decal. Jim K Kelly Brohan. 24.7 meters or 24,700 24, liters. 5.8 tons. It's got a lot of options in this thing. 4D modding always do extremely high quality stuff. He makes all his own assets and everything. His file sizes are very large, but they are, you know, like high quality textures and that type of thing. So this is like 70 or 80 megabytes, this thing. So you've got configurations here. You've got the grain door. You've got that one, which probably opens the hatch at the back. Uh, you've got the little shoot thing. Ooh. I, I, that, what the hell is this thing? That looks like something from a manure system. Uh, higher heap angle. I, I don't know what that means. Uh, then, oh, you get a, uh, okay, this is a larger capacity, 29.7. Is he going to go through all the options again? He is. So he's going to repeat the sequence of options. Okay. And then back to 15. So you get two, two options with this thing. Uh, I'm going to get this one because I, I want to see what this actually does. Uh, wheel options, we get BKT, Bredstein, uh, Midas, Continental, Michelin, Trelleborg, uh, Nokians. That looks a little bit wonky. Is, is one side up higher than the other? It could be just me. Is it slightly slanted or something? I don't know. Uh, and then you get all sorts of bloody options with this one. You get the twin radials. You get the uh, twin forestry, so they're a wider tire, I guess. Twin uh, twin forestry, okay. Uh, no keens, we get these ones. No options on that one. Uh, we get the BKTs, we get uh, a different thread type. So there's a few different ones there, as you can see, as you can scroll through them. Bredstein, no options on the Bredstein. Midas has a couple of options. Different treads again. Continental have a different tire tread as well. Some of these are road or kind of off tires, I guess, or off-road tires. So yeah, all sorts of uh, wheel options there. Plenty to keep you going, I guess. Not going to go through everything. You kind of get the picture. Uh, so we get the mud flap. These should be dynamic. I would assume that these are dynamic and animated. Uh, metal fluid flaps. Oh, so you get these things on the sides. Okay. Metal fluid flaps. And you get both of them. Plastic mud flaps. Okay. All oh, right. Okay. Plastic. With the, uh, the rear thing again. So you got uh, three sets of options, I guess. You have that version, you have that version with the plastic, and then you have the metal. So you, you, you've got some uh, you've got some good options there. Catwalk. What the hell is a catwalk? Uh, ah, so that's the, uh, the uh, yeah, so that thing, I guess, whatever it's called. A catwalk. Ladder options. You can put ladders on the sides, I guess. You can put a ladder on this side, yeah. Yeah, there's a ladder option. Brake options. You can put ABS braking. Uh, Jason, how are you, sir? How are things? Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate that. I hope you're doing well, sir. Add ABS brakes. Do they actually work, though? So, yeah, there's an object change there. I can see something is happening. Look. It's adding some uh, hydraulic hosing and that type of thing, extra hosing. But whether they actually work in game, I don't know. Toolbox, we have standard. Uh, where is the toolbox? Where is the toolbox? Uh, oh, tools. Add two. Where's the tools? Okay, where is the freaking tools? I don't see anything. Can you see it? Where's the tools? 
toolbox contents. Where's the bloody toolbox? I don't know. I, I'm missing something clearly. Uh, I see no toolbox there. Okay. I don't know. Um, light package, we get standard. We get light package one. Light package two. Three, four. Jesus Christ. 4D, you absolute lunatic. Oh, you changed all the reflectors on the back. Look. So there's all different. Oh, there's 10 of them. 11? Holy shit. This guy is insane. Look at this. There's 14 freaking options on this thing. Holy Toledo. That's insane. All right. Yeah, there you go. You get 14 options. Okay. Uh, optional extras for standard. And we get the shovel. Where the hell is the shovel? Now I can see the um, I can see the light guards, but I cannot see that shovel. Where the hell is the shovel? So there's probably something there that I'm clearly missing. I wonder if it's part of. Oh my God, we're not even through half the options. Holy shit! How many options has he got in this thing? side lights oh my god look at all the bloody options so yeah put lights on the side and there's all various configurations jesus wept uh, there's nine bloody options on this thing draw bar lord have mercy i mean i like my options don't get me wrong but there there, there is a uh you know, there is something to be said for uh, uh, being a little bit conservative. Uh, I remember there was there was a mod on the mod of a truck mod. And I'd never seen... I mean, if you thought 82 Studio was bad with his, you know, the 10,000 options. This thing had like a million. This truck. I couldn't believe how many options this thing had. But this is insane. Look at all the options on this thing. Holy buckets. Cover. Okay, put the cover on this thing. I'll give the guy credit. Um, he has an absolute... Sh oh, here we go. Uh, right crash bar. Left crash bar. Uh, long right crash bar. So you put that one there. Uh, another one on the opposite side. So maybe if I go back up to add toolbox, this might actually change things. Oh, there's the toolbox. Okay. Maybe the add tools. Oh, it's the toolbox contents. I know what it is. So what will probably happen is there'll be tools inside in that box. But you have to actually select it from down here. Ah, uh, I get it. So you can put that one there. Uh, I'm just going to get this. You can change the colors, obviously, as well. There's a lot of colors. Uh, that's the main body. Uh, I've got the main body color up here as well. All right, that makes sense. The brake color. And then we'll do something obvious and we can see the damn thing. The brake color. So there's something changing in there, but I can't quite see it, obviously. Cover color. We change that look. Uh, yeah. So yeah, and yeah, then you have the rim color as well. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff on this thing. A lot of stuff. Jeez, the very very um. You may not get all these options on on the uh, on the console version though. This is the PC version. All right, just be aware of that. I'm not I'm not playing with the console version. So as far as I'm aware as well, um, uh, 4D modding, he has access to, 
he has support from the manufacturers, you know, so he might have access to some of the manufacturers will have like 3D CAD files, and, and then some others will have, you know, you know, uh, blueprints and that type of thing. Not not all manufacturers will have 3D CAD files. Most of them will know, but not all of them. So yeah, he he will have access to um, you know the 3D CAD files. He'll have access to the decals. See all these decals, right? All these decals will be accurate to the real world machines. So what you're seeing here is a is a highly accurate. 3D model of a real world piece of equipment. So we've got all this stuff at the back here as well. Uh, this is interesting, this piece here. I'm fairly certain I've seen this used in manure system in 19. He's got some custom tension belts. He's, you know, he's made his own colors of the tension belts here, look. And uh, these look like a custom texture as well. So he might have done these from scratch himself. Got all your connection hoses here. Hydraulics and electrics in and out. That toolbox. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see what happens when I attach this. Woo! The hell was that? What the hell? Uh, let's uh, open the cover. No, wait, what? Ooh. Oh! What the hell was that? Holy shit, look at this! Holy Toledo! I've never heard of that before. Ooh, look at that! Oh, that is quality. Look at that. Oh, baby, that is something else. Holy crap, that is some level of detail. Look at that, look. Oh, we have an animation on the, uh, on the thingy here. So the mud flap is animated. Yeah, I've never seen that level of detail on the, you know, these kind of animations before. That is very, very nice. And look at the way it unfolds, look. Isn't that cool? That is awesome. Well done, sir. Well done. Oh, um. That's the, uh, the tractor. Uh, unfold tipper. What's happening? Okay, I don't know what's happening here. Let me see if I try and identify what's causing that sound. What is that? So I can hear the animations, but I don't know what's actually going on with this thing. Um, we can do the tip side back. We can do the grain valve. So let's fill this, shall we, and see what happens. Fill it, please. It's a toolbox? Oh, it is! Well done. Oh, so that's why you have the the added tools in there. Oh, okay, let's do that again. Uh, which one was it? Uh, ah, that is very cool. Look at that. That's awesome. Well done, sir. That is so cool. Right. Well spotted, Jason. Well spotted, sir. Uh, unload. Woo! What the hell? Ooh, look at those animations. Oh, that is something else. Look. Ooh! Woo! How cool are those animations? That is awesome. Really? 
really, really well done. That's, the, you know, that's attention to detail right there, you know. You don't get that with most models. Oh, that's it. That is so freaking cool. Right, let's change to the grain door. There we go. Ooh, nice animation there, look. Very nice. That is not bad at all. I've seen worse than that. Yeah, a, a really, really strong effort there from 4D modding. Um, in terms of the, you know, the level of detail this guy puts into his stuff is fantastic, you know. So you can see everything over here, all the hydraulics and electrics. All your connection points, all your hosing and cabling inside, look. Your piston parts. I don't know if I can get any uh, any closer than that, but yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of detailing going on here. Very very nice animation. Look, look, look at that. Look very very smooth and everything coming out of that. Look. Well done. High quality stuff, my friends. High quality stuff. But you would expect such from Mr. Four D modding, which is um, available on earagri.net. He does have mods in the mod hub as well, but these are his uh, the PC versions. So his PC version is going to have, you know, more functions. Uh, they're going to be, you know, higher quality textures and that type of thing. Look at all that, look, isn't that awesome? So that is his trailer. Very, very nice indeed. Wee! This case tractor is available from mods.mygamestim.com. Uh, it's fully free, publicly available, and anybody can download it. Next up, we have the. So this is kind of a, a twofer. Comes two in a pack. You get the major LP uh, LGP 2050. She is a slurry tanker, branded obviously. Probably based on the real world CAD files and everything from uh, the manufacturer. And uh, 9.3 meters uh, capacity, so 9,300 liters, 4.4 tons, 150 horsepower, 7.5 meter working width, 8 mph, pretty standard specifications for these kind of smaller tankers. Tanker configuration, we get the splash plate. We get. 2050 splash plate. We get it with the top fill. I would assume that that thing opens with an animation. Uh, we get the mass tech. So you get that object change there. Mass tech. Uh, and with the top fill. Uh, we get a larger version then, which is 10 points, uh, 10,900 liters. So you kind of see it there. Look, it's larger, physically larger. It'll probably go through the same sequence of uh, options again. So yeah, let's uh, let's get the uh, let's get that one there. That one kind of looks okay to me. Wheels we have a uh, BKT Continental Michelin Midas Trelleborg Nokian Bridgestein. So we're getting all sorts of wheel options. Those are wide boys. Different thread types, you know, the usual stuff that one would expect. I don't know if there's any custom threads in this. I, I don't remember offhand. He may have some custom tires in this uh, particular mod, but I'm not entirely sure. So it's like the Agri Terror are probably custom tires. Uh, you get Trelleborgs. So yeah, there, there's there you know there's all sorts of um all sorts of tires uh, tires with this. We get the dealer info. Uh, let's 
So there's a decal on the side here, standard, add dealer decal. I don't know what that means. Maybe you are allowed to add your own decal. Something my game steam and I explored in uh, FS19, adding your own decals. Custom reg plates. You've got cork. Yeah, you've got a lot of Irish. So this this major is probably an uh, a piece of Irish equipment. I, I'm not aware of major myself in terms of a uh, manufacturer. So I'm from Limerick, obviously. So so you've got all the 32 countries. Uh, uh, you've got oh, you got other ones. You've got uh, you've got uh, Australia. Yeah, you've got Canada, but yeah, you've got loads. Yeah, France, Italy, Netherlands. So yeah, it's not all just Ireland or anything. Yeah, he's got loads of different players from different countries. Very nice. Scotland, Wales. Go with Limerick, that's where I'm from. Hanger options. So you can put the hangers on the side, you can put the left or the right, and then both, I guess. Oh, you can put the tubes on it as well. So let's go with that one with the tube, uh, the, the dual tubes. Fill point options. Uh, so this is the little thingy on the side here. So you can put left or right, or both, I guess. Would there be many real-world machines with two points? Wouldn't they have a left or right, really, wouldn't they? I don't know, maybe they have them on both sides, I don't know. Old decal design, you can change the, uh, so that's the old decal. Old decal, new decal. Uh, I, I don't think it really matters. They're not hugely different. Let's go with the new one, I guess. Holes support color. Uh, I don't know what's changing there. Oh, it's at the front. Ah, oh, so it's changing the uh, that thing there. Let's go with the. Uh, let's go with the yellow. Uh, what is spring color? So you've got a spring here. Oh, you can change that as well. Look, different colors. I like the yellow. Uh, rear filter or rear filler color. So you can change the color of that as well. Look. Got the yellow. Galvanized. You've got the brass. I like the yellow. Pump color. Uh, oh, okay. So you can change the color of the pump here as well. All various colors. Very nice. Uh, draw bar options. You can change it. Oh, okay. You can change the, uh, the draw bar and the PTO changes as well. Let's go with that one. Body color, jeez, there's an awful lot of options. Holy shit. So we can change the kind of the, uh, the the color of this thing. It's kind of a glossy color there. It'll probably go back with the green or something. Uh, it's kind of a rough color. I like that one actually, that's not bad. Mud flaps, <coughs> where's the mud flaps? Oh, you can change them to galvanized or black or whatever. Lots and lots of options. Siphon connector color. I think this is up here. It is, yeah. So this thing up here. Uh, let's go with that one again. Uh, one second, there we go. So yeah, lots and lots of options on this thing. Um, unbelievable amount of options. Rim colors. Very very impressive in terms of the the options. You you, you can't uh, you can't fault the guy in terms of the the options. You can change every little piece of this thing.
Holy shit. PTO. Got the engine. Uh, Joe Two Sons. From uh, Tolo. So that's probably real. I mean, this guy probably exists. You know, if you give that <laughs> ring of that number, don't do that. But yeah, you know what I mean. That that's probably a real uh, a real thing. Now, giants wouldn't allow that, though, right? So let's just say, for example, this this deed or decal, right? Or or let's say this is where it was bought from, right? Giants would not allow this because if that was a real world, you know, uh, label. You know, they, they could get in trouble for that. So they wouldn't allow this. Uh, you'd have to change it to something generic or, or lizard or, or some random number or whatever, you know. He has the VIN plate on the uh, on the pump here as well. Look at that. Huh? Not awesome. You can read the bloody decals. So these are probably like 4K textures or something. You know. So, um, that is pretty damn cool. Lots and lots of detail on this. I would assume that all this stuff is his own thing. So these tubes here, he probably did this himself. These are, these are like a normal map to get all this ribbed hosing, look. So anybody's done that, that's a normal map. You have the, uh, the, the that piece there. Lots and lots of detail. I assume this piece opens at t at the at the top here as well. At the hoses. Lots and lots and lots of detail on this. Very very highly detailed. What was that? Oh. Now, I, I am noticing a little bit of a... Um, <coughs> a delay. The timings of the animations don't seem to correspond. So, uh, watch this again, right? So, watch the animations, right? And then listen to the, the, the audio. There's a little bit of a, an out-of-sync going on here, in my opinion. So there's a very, very slight sync issue there with the timings of the animations. You know, with the sounds and then and the, and the timing of the animations. They just seem a little bit out of sync, very slightly. Um, you can open the cover. Yeah, you can, look. That's perfect. Yeah, the, the timings on that are perfect. That's awesome. Um, do I have um? Do I have bloody um? Precision farming installed or something? I must have. Um. Oh, you can put water in. Oh, you can put water in this as well. Why would you want to put water in this thing? So 10,911 liters. Farming similar to 20. How are you? How are things? Thank you for tuning in, my friend. I appreciate that. I hope you're doing well, sir. We are looking at a, uh, a PC mod. So this will come to the mod up eventually for all platforms. It might not be major, you know, it might be Lizard or around something like that, you know, but uh, we're looking at the PC versions of 4D modding's latest mods available from airagri.net. So there is a second component then to this uh, thingy. You get the Mastic Dribble Bar. Alright. Wait, what? Oh, look at that! Did you see, look, there's an animation when you go into the shop. Watch this. No, no, go back. Look, that is fantastic. I've never seen that before either. That is awesome. Well done, uh, 4D. Well done, sir. Splash plate. 
Design. Holes color. I'm not quite sure what color I like. Um, let's go up the red, I guess. So this is for like a slurry injector or something. Uh, it's a slurry dish can be attached to suitable slurry tanks. Is it a, a, a is it an inject? It's it's an injector, I think, as far as I know. No, this might not attach because of the the piece at the back I have. No, it won't. I've got the wrong configuration. We'll try this one out first. Oh! What the? Uh... Oh! Holy crap! He's got all sorts of uh, stuff going on in this thing. So yeah, it is working as you can see, look. Now the working width isn't spectacular, but you know, it's within the range of what you'd expect from a piece of equipment like this. And it's probably real world accurate as well, you know. Uh, deactivate automatic application rate. Activate. Uh, toggle slurry tanker pump mode. Toggle slurry tanker pump mode empty. Pump mode fill. Ooh. Not quite sure what's going on there, but there's something going on. That's my tractor. No values detected yet, obviously, because uh, I haven't done anything. Oh, can I refill this thing or something? Hold on a second. Um, uh, what is it? Turn a uh, fill. Pump mode fill. Quite sure what's going on there, but whatever. So it seems to be um, using slurry at uh, not quite as fast as I would have expected. Now, I don't know what the you know the the rate you know at this thing you know uses slurry, but uh, it doesn't seem too bad. Let's just leave that there for a second. Um, shall we uh, use the Xylon to look at the uh, the other version? So this is the uh, Defense Xylon. This is the, another mod from my game Steam. This is uh, a Patreon exclusive mod. Ooh, what is going on there? What is going on there? What the hell have I done to this thing? I've screwed something up. Look at all this. Oh, I, I have broken... How have I broken this? God, I've broken the bloody thing. Oh shit, I'm gonna have to take a look at that. I don't know how I did, how the hell did I do that? Right, we're gonna have to, uh, 
Gonna have to take a look at that uh, very, very quickly and fix that bloody thing. Don't know what I did to that thing. Uh, let's go back and look at the other version. Put on the weight. Why is it not moving? Hire worker. What the hell? No, he hasn't. Why is it not moving? What is going on? One second. Why is this guy not doing anything? Is it because of precision farming or something? I have no idea what's going on. Okay. Uh, dismiss. Stop the engine. Right, let's get the other version of it with the mass tech. Uh, that one there. I've broken something, Tony. That's for damn sure. supposed to be like that? Don't tell me I've broken this as well. Seems to be... I don't know how these things attach. <clears throat> on the back here. Very wibbly wobbly. So they just kind of, I don't know, they just strap on or something? Oh god, that's long terminology, but you get the idea. Uh, let's fill this up. Oh, I've got the wrong thing selected, that's why. I have to uh, select... Oh! Enter! Buttons, Richard! God damn it! There we go. Uh, no, we have to put this down. No? Huh? Uh... Wait. What am I... Oh, it's already down. Okay. Ah, Jesus. Uh, turn on. First, you need to set the story to, to empty mode. Okay. Um. Okay. Empty. Oh, what was that? Something happened. Turn on. What the hell? Okay. What is going on? Uh, turn on story tanker. Wait. What the hell is in this thing? Did I put in uh, water or something in this thing? You idiot, look at that. No, that should work. There we go, you moron. Right. Yeah, look, she's working. So it's a dribble bar type thing. So she kind of digs a little bit into the soil, and then you know it, it, it spreads the, uh, the the liquid poop. 
Yeah, we got there eventually. So yeah, there's another one of his mods here as well, the, um, the Mastic Dribble Bar thingy. So I guess in the real world, these would be like flexible hoses. And they would kind of, you know, a couple of centimeters into the soil, you know. There we go. Now outside of it, there's no, how am I going to check the bloody log now with all this? Crap. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to check the bloody log with all these Lua errors. So, uh, how am I going to do this? Right, I think I'll just quickly take out the, uh, the Xylan. So your screen is going to go black for a second, so give me a second, guys. Uh, I do want to take out that Xylon and just, I want to check the log on the other mods, not necessarily the uh, the Xylon here. And uh, I'm going to have to fix that. I don't know what I did. I've done something to the bloody thing, obviously, because it wasn't like that before. Uh, th does that have an option to spray the, the, uh, does that have the option to spray, uh, Um, I no, I think I think there 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 are different things, um, Brian. So one would be for like the dribble bar, and then one would be for like the the slurry spread. Um, I don't think the the attach, you know, you have to have the right uh, option set. I guess is is the the right word. Bex, how are you? How are things? Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate that. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, we had to get rid of that Zylan because I won't be able to. I won't be able to check the log. Where's my? So I'm gonna just go quickly, just fly through everything, right? Okay, just ignore all this. This is just so I can bring up all of the options and just to check if there's any, you know, errors in the log or, or anything. So that's kind of how you, you generate, you know, the, the object changes to do stuff like this. Well, I mean, it's 4D modding. I, I, I don't anticipate there'll be any errors on this thing. Let's just check the log here. Now you're going to have the usual warning from... Um, so this has been there since the uh, the base game. See the, the foliage, LOD1, mesh, meadow cut. So that's to do with my graphic settings. That's uh, an Elm Creek map thing. It's not even a, an error, it's just a warning. I have my graphic settings set to too high. And the rest of it is all clean. So the, the mod is fine. So there is no er errors in the log. And that's what we're looking for. So yeah, no, I I think, um, Brian, um, <clears throat> you have to have the, the right thing selected at the back in order to attach the uh, the dribble bar. I think that's what you were talking about, anyways. So we'll just go back down to the bottom of the log here. So yeah, like, for, so this part here, right? So you would have to select, so if you select this option, you won't be able to attach the dribble bar. It has to be this, right? Okay. Because you can see the the back of it there, look. See that, see the way they, they, uh, the circle piece, whatever they call it. Uh, we'll ch quickly check the brow on there as well. Once again, I don't anticipate any um, any errors with this either. I wouldn't imagine so. Everything seemed to work 
from what I saw. Let's check the log in that as well. That one looks fine as well. Look. So that one is clean as well. So yeah, both of the mods are error. Uh, uh, it looked like the dribble bar that had the... Uh, doing the version. <clears throat> oh, you're right. There was an option. There was an option with the dribble bar. So there was an option on this at the back, right? So you had the splash plate. Now, I don't know what that means. And then you have this one. Now, I don't know if these are functional, though. They, these could be just cosmetic things, you know what I mean? So, for example, that there is, is from the old FS19 manure system. Uh, Injection Z, how are you, sir? How are things? Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate that. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back, sir. So, yeah, this is the old, manu uh, you know, the uh, Wobster manure system from 19. So, that's what that is. Whether these have any in-game function? They, it, they might be for certain maps. You know, the... um. You know, there are certain German maps that still use some of the manure system. Um, I, I can't remember what they are at the moment. But there are there are um, some maps that, that still use some of the old kind of manure system uh, attacher points and that type of thing. Hoff Bergman? Doesn't Hoff Bergman have some of the old manure system still in, on the map? So it might be for something like that, you know? Whoa! Right, so yeah, now this has the dribble and this little thing of the thingy at the back. I don't know what's going to happen with this though. Uh, we fill. Now, have I selected the right piece of equipment before I fill it? No, I, I make sure it's not water this time. So it's already in the ground. Um, now we need to uh, prime the pump. Okay. Turn it on. So yeah, it's there. Clearly that's working. Now I don't know what the other part it does on that. Do you have double application rate? Activate automatic application rate. So that's for precision farming, but I don't use precision precision farming, so it doesn't really matter. So can you select the other thing? Let's try this. Uh, what's going on here? Looks like we have some kind of an option here. Is that the tractor? Change cruise control speed. I'm not seeing any option there or anything moving. It does look like there's an option. No, nothing as I can see. Uh, forward slurry distribution. Let's just fold this and see what happens. Will it still work? Maybe this part piece at the back works now. Wait, what's happening? What's going on? 
Um, uh, I, I have no idea what's happening. So yeah, that piece at the back doesn't seem to work. <laughs> it's possible I'm doing it wrong. I mean, that's certainly possible. But uh, in terms of the mod itself, that's obviously a high quality piece of uh, equipment. Very, very nice. Great job from uh, 4D Money. He always does stellar work in all of his mods, so I'm, you know, I'm not surprised by these either. So yeah, 4D modding, these are the PC versions. There will be mod hub versions, console versions of these eventually. They may not be branded major they might be branded lizard or something like that and some of the features might be taken out but you you, you know you, you'll kind of you'll get the same kind of thing you know It'll be a little bit stripped down so yeah airagri.net is uh is where you'll find all of uh 4d modding's mods he has quite a few a lot of them are, are english and irish brands and uh he does some good stuff and he's got a map as well i think I do have precision farming, as you can see, my friends. So, yeah, that's what's... Uh, I don't normally use that stuff. So, I think that might be it for me, my friends. Um, you know, there there isn't much more I can really show off, to be perfectly honest. Um, I just want to see if there's... Uh, make sure that everything is, is hunky-dory with the katana here. Just load everything in here, just to get the i3d files to load in. See if anything turns up on the uh, on the log. Let's check the log here. So that's the exhaust extension, bloody thing. So that exhaust extension was on the testing list last last Monday, and then it disappeared. So that, that error is being generated by exhaust extension because it's using a, a custom smoke underscore mat. Um, so I was hoping that uh, the, 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 the modder was going to fix this error. But uh, it's gone from the testing list again. So it must, it must have failed and it hasn't been back all week. So I'm assuming that the mod has failed testing and it's uh, gone back to giants or gone back to the modder. So the um, all of the 40 modding mods are, are the logs are clean and my katana is clean as well. So that's kind of that. Happy enough with that, right, my friends? Um, I think that's probably a good time to call it. I, as, you know, I I I just kind of wanted to show off the kind of the progress update on the Fen katana, and I had a couple of other mods in my folder as well that you know I said I might as well take a look at as well. You know. So, my friends, um, I think I'm going to call it. Holy shit, it's an hour and 33 minutes. Holy crap. Uh, I hope you are, Tony. You know, And if not, you know, there, there is something called um, uh, water, H2O. You know, uh, if you actually uh, you know, venture outside, you know, you might actually uh, encounter some of it. Right, my friends. Uh, <laughs> right, so listen, uh, thank you all very much for tuning in. I appreciate that. And uh, God willing, we shall see you again in the next one, whenever that may be. I have no set uh, schedule or schedule. Uh, but, um, you know, whenever the mood moves me, as they say, you know, or I have something to show off, you know, I'll, uh, I'll do a live stream. All right, my friends, thank you very much.